Okay, we're going to read and talk about our story to bear cubs before we take our comprehension test. Two Bear Cubs, retold by Robert D. Santusi, illustrated by Helen Dardick. Characters, storyteller, mother grizzly, older brother, younger brother, hawk, hawk, badger, mother deer, two fawns, mountain lion, mouse, measuring worm, to talk a -na. prologue, storyteller, enters from stage left. Many snows have come and gone since this story was first told. My people, the Miwok, live in California, some in what is now called Yosemite Valley. We tell stories of the old days when animal people lived in the valley. One story begins with Mother Grizzly going to the river to catch fish for herself and her cubs. Exit. Scene one. Setting, a forest and mountain, stage left. Open sky dotted with clouds, stage right. Blue cloth or painted cardboard across the front of the stage suggests a river. Mother Grizzly enters from stage left, holding a fish basket and stands on the river bank. Her cubs, younger brother and older brother, enter and begin to play in the water. Older brother, laughing and splashing. <laughs> Don't be afraid of a little water, younger brother. Younger brother, splashing back. I'm not, older brother. Mother Grizzly, scolding. Children, stop scaring away the fish or we will have nothing to eat. Out of the water now. They obey but manage a last splash or two. I want you to gather berries, but stay close and do not go down river. Strange things happen there. Okay, so boys and girls, how does our story, how do these dramas generally always start? What do we always have at the beginning of it? Yes, I love characters. We have the cast of characters, very good. And what is the setting of our play, of our drama? Yanni? Where does it take place? A forest and a mountain. Yes, a forest and a mountain. It says right here in the setting, a forest and a mountain. So our setting is a forest and a mountain. Mother Grizzly moves to stage left. The cubs move to stage right while playing and pushing each other. A berry bush. Wait, I wanted to ask you, I forgot. So why doesn't Mother Grizzly want the bear cubs to scare the fish? Teddy? Because if they, because if they do, they won't, she, they won't have anything to eat. Yeah, they won't have anywhere to eat. And where does she specifically tell them not to go? Where does she warn them off? She just tells them where not to go. Rocco? Um... Where does Mother Grizzly tell them not to go? She says, don't go to this certain place. What's the place she tells them not to go? To this certain place? Yeah, what place is it she tells them not to go? Um, uh, Somebody help, Juliana? Down river. She says, down river. Remember that, Rocco? She says, don't go down river. Piers, older brother, look at these berries. He picks and eats them greedily. They are so sweet. Taste them. Younger brother. We should take them back to mother. When older brother ignores him, the younger cub begins eating berries too. Suddenly, he rubs his stomach. I have eaten too many. Older brother. We will bring some back later. Oh, I am full too. Pointing. Let's see what is down river. Younger brother, worried. We are not supposed
supposed to go there? Older brother, taunting, starts off. I see only the river and trees and stones. What is there to fear? After a moment's hesitation, younger brother follows. Younger brother, rubbing his eyes. I am tired. The hot sun and my full belly make me want to sleep. Older brother, yawning. Oh, a nap would be good. Greedily. When you do something greedily, you take more than you need. Hesitation. A hesitation is a pause that shows you are unsure about doing something. A raised platform, decorated to look like a rock, slides into view. Younger brother, pointing. See that big, flat rock? It looks so warm. Let's rest there. The cubs lie down side by side, stretch, and fall asleep. Storyteller, entering stage left. The cubs fell asleep on the stone, but the stone was the seed of a mountain. As they slept, the stone grew bigger and bigger, higher and higher. His hand spiraling upward suggests the growing mountain. It carried them so high that only Hawk saw them as he flew by. Pauses. Hawk enters, stage right, waving his arms like wings. He flies past the rock, looks at the sleeping cubs, and then flies back off stage the way he came. Storyteller continuing. Meanwhile, Mother Grizzly wondered what had become of her cubs. Exit stage left. So what happened when the bears take a nap? What happened when the bears take a nap, Thomas? Seed of the mount grows, and so they are what? Avery? They're on top of a mountain. Can they get down? No. They cannot get down the mountain. Scene two. Fox and Badger are on stage, leaning cedar planks against a tent-shaped frame of poles. Mother Grizzly enters stage left, calling, Older brother! Younger brother! Mother Grizzly sees Fox and Badger. Fox! Badger! Have you seen my cubs? Fox. No, I have been helping Badger build a new home. Badger. Neither of us has seen them. We will help you look for them. Fox. Badger and Mother Grizzly search to the right. Mother Deer and Fawns enter, stage left, and seat themselves, grinding acorns. Fox, Badger, and Mother Grizzly return to stage left and discover Mother Deer and her two fawns. Mother Grizzly. Mother Deer, my little ones are missing. Have you seen them? Mother Deer. They have not come by while my children and I were grinding acorns, but we will help you find them. Mother Deer and Fawns rise and join the others as they move to stage right and then back again to left. They meet Mountain Lion carrying a load of firewood. Mother Grizzly. Mountain Lion, we are looking for my lost cub. Mountain Lion sets her burden down. I will help you find them. All move to stage right, while Mouse enters from left and sits. Mouse is weaving a basket. The group at stage right moves left and meets Mouse. Mother Grizzly. Mouse, have you seen my cubs? We have searched everywhere for them. We have looked in hollow logs and caves and in the berry patch and the honey tree. Mouse rising. No, but I will help you. Perhaps they went down river. Mother Grizzly. I warned them not to go there. Mother Deer, patting Mother Grizzly's shoulder and glancing at her own fawns. Sometimes our little ones do not listen very well. I agree that we should look down river. 
the animals on stage move slowly toward the mountain. Burden. A burden is something that is heavy to carry. Fox, stopping, pointing. Look, everyone, there is a mountain where there was only a stone before. All slowly raise their heads as they scan the mountain from base to summit. As they do, Hawk enters as before, flapping his wings. Mother Grizzly, I see Hawk. Cups paws around her mouth and shouts up to Hawk. Hawk, have you seen my lost cubs? Hawk, calling down. They are asleep on this strange new mountain. Mother Grizzly, calling up. Please fly to my children, wake them, and help them find their way down. Hawk pantomimes flying toward cubs and being blown back by mountain winds. After several tries, he speaks to those below. Hawk calling down. The wind will not let me reach your little ones. Someone will have to climb up and rescue them. Storyteller enters stage left. One by one, the animals try to reach the cubs. Animals pantomime their attempts as Storyteller speaks. Mother Grizzly tried several times, but always tumbled back. Mouse jumped from stone to stone, but quickly got scared and jumped back down. Badger climbed a bit higher. Mother Deer a little bit higher. Fox did even better, but none succeeded. Even Mountain Lion failed. So, oh, so boys and girls, who was able to um, see where the missing cubs were? Who was able to see that? Elisa? Hawk. Hawk was able to see where the missing cubs were. Now it has the word in there, pantomime. What does that mean? What do you think the word pantomime means? Because it says there, Hawk pantomimes flying toward cubs. What does that mean? Anastasia? It pretends. It pretends. It pretends to fly. A pantomime is when you pretend to act something out. So everybody pantomime flying. There you go, you're pantomiming right now. Okay, you can stop pantomiming. When Mother Grizzly sees this, she begins to weep. The other creatures gather around to console her. Unnoticed by them, Measuring Worm enters. Mother Grizzly, sadly, Mountain Lion, you are the best climber and were my best hope. There is no one now who can save my cub. Measuring Worm, I will try. The other animals turn and stare at him, and then all except Mother Grizzly begin to laugh. Mountain Lion, foolish Measuring Worm, do you think you can do what the rest of us have failed to do? Mouse meanly. Jutakana, your name is longer than you are. Storyteller, appearing stage left. My people call measuring worm Jutakana, which means little curl stretch. He moves by stretching, two, then curling, talk, the way a caterpillar moves. Unnoticed. When something is unnoticed, it is not seen by anyone. Okay, so boys and girls, who, who does mother, um, who was the best help that mother Grizzly had? Who was the best help? Yes, Ethan? The mountain lion. The mountain lion. Yes, the mountain lion. Did try to help Mother Grizzly. What animals did try to help her? Name the animals that tried to help her. Kelsey? Um, yeah, they all tried to help her. Mother Grizzly, drying her eyes. I welcome your help. Measuring Worm begins to climb, 
all the while crying to talk. The other animals sit, staring at the mountain, watching as the worm stretches and curls in a climbing motion. Measuring worm, loudly. To talk, to talk. Scene three, storyteller. In time, Measuring Worm climbed even higher than Mountain Lion. He climbed so high that the animals below could no longer see or hear him. Sometimes he would grow afraid and stop when he saw how high he had climbed and how much higher he had to go. Then he thought about poor Mother Grizzly, so worried at the bottom of the mountain. He thought about the cubs in danger at the top. Then he found his courage again and continued to climb, all the while crying. Measuring worm. Two talk, two talk, two talk. Storyteller exits as measuring worm finally crawls onto the rock. He bends over the two sleeping cubs and calls. Measuring worm. Wake up! The cubs are drowsy as they wake and stretch and yawn. Drowsy. A drowsy person is sleepy and not able to think clearly. Oh, well, so what does it mean if you're drowsy? Logan? A drowsy person is sleepy and not able to think clearly. Everybody pretend like you're drowsy. I want to see a classroom full of drowsy people. Oh yes, okay, everybody's drowsy. Okay, everybody become alert. You're all alert now, thank you. Older brother crawls and looks over the side of the rock. Younger brother, something terrible has happened. Look how high we are. Younger brother, also on his knees, peers down. We are trapped here. We will never get back to our mother. The cubs begin to cry. They have forgotten measuring worm. Measuring worm, comforting the cubs. Do not be afraid. I have come to guide you safely down the mountain. Just follow me and do as I say. We will follow the safe path that brought me here. Older brother, I am afraid I will fall. Younger brother, I am scared too. Measuring worm, gently. Surely Mother Grizzly's children are not so afraid, for she is the bravest creature in the valley. Older brother, puffing out his chest and feeding it with his paw. We are grizzly, we are brave. Younger brother, doing the same. We will follow you. They pantomime following a safe path in single file, with measuring worm leading, older brother following, and younger brother behind. Below, Fox suddenly spots something, stands up, and peers more closely. Fox, excitedly, pointing to a spot about halfway up the mountain. Mother Grizzly, look! Measuring worm is guiding your cubs down the mountain. All animals look where Fox is pointing. Mother Grizzly, joyful, fearful. Be careful, my children. Mother Deer, reassuring her friend. Trust Measuring Worm. He has brought them safely this far. He will not fail you now. The animals continue to watch. They slowly lower their gaze to follow the climbers as they come down the mountain. At last, the cubs and Measuring Worm make a final leap from the mountain to the ground. The cubs run to their mother. Mother Grizzly gives them a big hug. Then she pushes them away and shakes her finger at them. Reassuring. If you are reassuring a friend, you are trying to keep him from worrying. Oops, sorry. Mother Grizzly, scolding. Both of you have been very naughty. Look at the trouble and worry you have caused us all. You did not listen to me and went where you were not supposed to go. Older brother, hanging head. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Younger brother, starting to cry. <laughs> I will never disobey you again. 
Mother Grizzly, gathering them up in her arms again. Be sure that you remember what happened today, but do not cry, little ones. It has all ended well, thanks to the help and courage of Measuring Worm. The animals gather around Measuring Worm and congratulate him. Storyteller enters stage left. Then all the animals decided to call the new mountain Tutakanula, which means measuring worm stone. This was to honor the heroic worm who did what no other creature could do. He saved the two bear cubs. The mountain held this name for many years until newcomers named the mountain El Capitan. We Miwok still call the mountain Tutakanula to this day. The end. So somebody tell me who gave the measuring worm courage as he climbed the mountain? Who gave him courage? Ivy. Mother Grizzly. Mother Grizzly. And how did Mother Grizzly give him that courage, Ivy? Um, by using, um, oh no, um, by Um, sort of. Anastasia? He thought about how Mother Grizzly was so worried at the bottom of the mountain. Yes, that's what he was thinking about. He was thinking about how worried poor Mother Grizzly was at the bottom of the mountain. So that's what gave him the courage to keep climbing. He was thinking about poor Mother Grizzly. And then, boys and girls, why was the measuring worm such an unlikely hero of the story? What made the measuring worm such an unlikely hero. Why was he the surprise hero when there were so many different other animals that could have been the hero? Clark? He was so small. He was so small. Yes, because he was so small. Very good. Okay, boys and girls, we are ready to take our test. I think you'll be good. You'll do a great job, especially if you are a good listener.